and grace again to be among us, enlightening our hearts and our minds with your message, your word that you have for each one of us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today's sermon is entitled, The Disciple Has Faith. And I'm going to tell two stories on myself today, one pretty good and one not so good. We'll get to the not so good one in a minute. Some of you have heard this first story uh, that I'm going to tell you. When the Lord called me to serve Him, at first I wanted it to be this exciting thing. I was a teenager. I wanted to smuggle Bibles behind the iron curtain. But the Lord knew that was going to fall one day and He wouldn't need me to do that much longer. So He said, I want you to go to seminary. I thought that would be the most boring thing that you could imagine to become a parish priest, but that's what he called me to do. So I shared that, you know, I, I understood that call, and when I asked Leona to marry me, I, sh I shared with her what my call was, just in case she didn't want to have any part of being the wife of a, a parish priest, and she said yes anyway. Well. Looking at going to seminary was, you know, I can handle the studies, etc. But financially, we didn't see how we could possibly make it. We managed to save about $10,000 between us as we were working. Neither of our families could support us. And so we thought, how are we going to pay for this? We just imagined we'd come out of seminary with all our savings gone and this huge debt. But we prayed. We said, Lord, we want to graduate with no debt, with our savings intact, so that we don't have that burden hanging over our heads when we go out in ministry for you. And we just left it at that. We went to seminary, graduated three years later with no debt and $10,000 I don't, to this day, I haven't quite figured out exactly how God did all the pieces and parts. I know when I got there, I applied for financial aid, and the school helped some, and the bishop sent me some money, and my church sent us some money. And I applied the foundations for grants, and Leon worked a little bit. Somehow God brought it all together. But that prayer of faith is what I believe initiated God's action. And he calls us to be a people of faith. So turn with me to page 1,519 in your few Bibles. 1,519. We've got a little story to read. Page 1,519. I'm turning with you, so it'll take me a minute to get there. From Matthew chapter 17, beginning at verse 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. When Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, I was told by a little bird that this was one of Lizanne's favorites. 
But the truth is, we are called to be a people of faith. We are called to pray when things seem impossible. We are called to move and to act when it seems like everything is arrayed against us. We are called to go forth even if it doesn't look like we've got the finances to do it. We are called to put our faith and our trust in God. Just as Abraham did, as I explained to the children. God called him to leave his home and go to another country, having no idea where it was, but that God would lead him. God sometimes calls us out of that place where we are so comfortable into a new place where he wants us to serve him. Now, one of the ways, there's two ways I want to talk about how we live out our faith today. The first one is this, from Galatians chapter 5. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Faith expressing itself through love. Remember the gospel? The parable of the Good Samaritan. One of those powerful parables that always grabs my heart because the priest passed by on the other side. That always gets me right there. But God calls us to be a people of faith that lives a life of love. That we do something with the faith that he has given us. Another story that I ran into this week as I was preparing some years ago, a pastor in South Korea, Dr. Lee John Rock, he was the pastor and still is the pastor of God's Love Community Church in Seoul. And in Korea, evidently, there's an epidemic, but it's true around the world too. If parents have a child and the child is disabled or disfigured in some way, they might abandon that child. And children started showing up on the doorstep of the church, abandoned. And they, of course, would take the child in and care for it. And the pastor felt led by God to do something even more. And so he built this way for people to put a child, a baby, in this box called it a drop box. And because of the cold temperatures that often dominated South Korea, they installed a heater and they put a light nearby and a, and a bell. And they would put the child in the box and shove the box into the church and ring the bell and leave. And he found himself lying awake sometimes at night waiting for the bell to ring. And if it rang, he'd jump up and run down Some, some people gave them a difficult time saying, you're just encouraging people to abandon their children. But they knew they were doing what God had called them to do. Save children who might be abandoned in an alley and die otherwise. They've saved hundreds of children, he and his wife and some of the families in the church, still going today. He put his faith into action, loving those children that others didn't care about. So that's the first way that we live out our faith. We do it by expressing God's love to others. And then the second way that faith shows itself is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We live by faith, not by sight. In other words, sometimes we can't see what God has in mind for us. Like when he called Abraham to leave his home. He didn't know where he was going. It was out of his sight. But he went by faith. Well, when we got ready to graduate from seminary, of course, seminarians are looking for a place to serve. And, and we 
were all talking about where we were going and what we were doing, and, and, and it was looking like I didn't have a place to go or a place to serve until uh, the bishop called me and said, Gary, I placed eight seminarians the year before into all the positions in the diocese that we had for assistant clergy or curates. We really have no place for you. But what we've done is we've put three small rural churches together. They already have a priest, but we, we put another church together and threw some money together, a little bit from the diocese, some extra from the churches. And we can bring you back to the diocese to serve with that priest in those three churches for six months. And then you're on your own. That made me feel good. You know, I had given birth to Jody in seminary, and she was pregnant with Daniel. So I said, okay, I'll pray and think about that. Meanwhile, a priest came to the seminary, and he was looking for an assistant. And he was from St. Paul's Church in Winter Haven, Florida. So I signed up, and I went and interviewed with him. And, uh, you know, it was a very secure position, a good-sized church that could afford and needed an assistant. And so I weighed the two possibilities. And even though my heart was saying, accept the bishop's call, I took the one I could see with my human sight. And I went to Central Florida. It was not a good situation in Central Florida. I did not put my faith into action. I, I went based on my human wisdom. It was the wrong decision. I want to encourage you to live by your faith and not necessarily by your human wisdom. Yes, we're called to use the wisdom God's given us, but sometimes we've got to step out in faith. I know of a person who has lived by faith for 85 years. She's been an inspiration to me for three years now. And many of you know this story, but I'm going to tell it again because some of you don't. Several years ago, her son Jeff was in the hospital. And he was in the hospital, what was it, three months? Four months? Six months? She adds a month every time we tell the story. <laughs> but he was in the hospital a long time not doing well. The doctors basically came in one day and said, there's really no hope. We don't think he's going to make it. But Lizanne never gave up on her faith. She kept praying every day. And he got a little bit better, so they moved him in, out of ICU into a regular room, and, but he was still not in his right mind. <clears throat> one day I walked in to the room to go visit and pray and give him communion and turned around and looked at me and said, Hi, Father Gary. And he was healed. His brain was better. It was a miracle. And I know it was the prayers of his mother and her faith that God moved to heal him. Now he's gone to be with the Lord earlier this year. God decided it was time. And so now he is celebrating at the throne room of God waiting for a mom to join him someday. But that's faith. Faith in, in the face of adversity. Faith in the face of odds where people are saying it's not possible. Faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. that we would be a people